Hello, Keith Ruck here at VengeMachinery.org. Got a little uh, collaborative project I'm going to be working on here um, that I thought I'd share with you guys. And uh, this is actually this has actually been a multi-step collaboration between several people, and we're about to send it off to the next part of this journey. And uh, I thought I would kind of share with you what's going on. So, what we're making is we're making. Um, basically this part right here. And what this is, is this is a handhold cover for the boiler on our 1917 steam locomotive, Vulcan Ironworks locomotive out at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture in Historic Village. So uh, basically up on the, on the boiler, they have some places where you can take a cover out and you can actually get your hand down inside the boiler, um, which is why it's called a handhold. And you use that for cleaning the boiler, for inspecting the boiler, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the one that is on the boiler now is kind of, well, it, it works, but it's, it's not very pretty, number one. It's kind of hacked together. It's just not the, really the right uh, thing that goes there. It's not a safety issue or anything else. It's just more aesthetics. It just doesn't look right on the locomotive. Uh, so we decided, hey, let's make a new one. So. Uh, what I did was we, we kind of used this one right here. Um, let me zoom you in on that and show it to you. So this right here is a handhold cover. This is an old one. Uh, we're not even sure exactly what boiler it came out of. Just kind of sitting down in the shop at the museum. But this is kind of the style that we wanted. And basically what you have is you have an oval hole in the boiler. And uh, this uh, is designed so that you can take it off. You can take it off, and because it's oval, you can kind of go in this way, go down to the bottom, pull it up in there, and it seats around here with a gasket. Then you drop the little wing over it, tighten it up, and it pulls it tight from the bottom. And then, of course, as the pressure on the boiler builds up, the pressure is pushing out on this. So that's the reason you want it kind of on the inside coming out. And the oval shape allows you to go in there. Now this one here, you notice, actually has some curve to it. And that is because it's made to, this particular one was made to fit the curvature of the boiler. The handhole on the Vulcan is more or less flat. There's actually kind of an oval piece of pipe that's welded into the boiler. Um, this flat all the way around, and it's a much bigger hole as you can see. This is the the the, the pattern or the casting uh, that we've got back for the handhold cover. But let me tell you about how we we got to this. So we started out with a couple of things. First off, just a little hand drawing of what we were looking for. Uh, we also did a tracing of the actual oval shape that this fits into, so you can kind of see the. Uh, the line there, that's the actual inside diameter of that oval that this has to fit down into. And uh, I sent these out to my buddy Charles Marlin, who uh, was kind enough to basically draw this thing up. He uses a SolidWorks uh, software. He drew it up in a 3D model. We went back and forth with dimensions and this, that, and the other uh, over email. Uh, but he had a 3D model of this. This is just a mechanical drawing showing the, the dimensions and everything. But he had a 3D model of this in the computer. And uh, from that, uh, using uh, a 3D printer, see here, there's his little Athena 3D printer. He printed out uh, the pieces to, to the pattern. And uh, he actually, because the the, pa the part was bigger than uh, his printer would allow. He actually printed it out in four different pieces. He put little dovetail um, pockets in there that he was able to piece it all together. And uh, the final pattern came out looking like this. And this is basically just a, it's, it's a plastic 3D uh, print of that uh, design that he drew up in SolidWorks. We then took uh, this uh, pattern uh, that Charles drew up, uh, taking into account the shrink factor from casting it, and we sent this out to a foundry. And the foundry we sent it to was Cattail Foundry, which is an Amish foundry, um, I think in Pennsylvania, if I remember right. And uh, they 
took the pattern, put it in the sand, actually cast it. And uh, they make these things all the time. They do a lot of steam work there. And uh, they know exactly how to do this. But basically, they, the, the bolt is just a regular bolt, but they actually cast the head of the bolt down in here. So the bolt is captured down in there. Uh, but we've got the, the actual bolt there. Uh, so this is, what we're, this is where we're at now. We have the, um, the actual casting. Uh, but it's not complete. We, there's one more step we need to do, and uh, that step is is we need to have the little uh, lip milled down in here, kind of like this one. You want it to go up into, register up into that boiler here with this lip, or up into that oval hole, and uh, there's also a gasket, and I've got the little rubber gasket that will go in here. So basically we just need to mill out a little notch that this gasket sits down inside of. The casting will come up a little bit above the, the top of the gasket. This will pull up into the bottom. And uh, with the, the machined recess in there, uh, it will perfectly align uh, the gasket here into the hole and you just tighten it up then into the, the part. So, so part one of the collaborative project is actual Charles Marlin drawing this up and printing it out. And he actually has a little short video where he talks about uh, the pattern a little bit. And I'll put a link to that down in the description below where you can go take a look at Charles's video on that. He doesn't really talk a lot about drawing it up in SolidWorks, but he had, again, a 3D model of that that he, he worked off of. But you can kind of go take a look at that. So Charles took care of that part. Of course, we sent it to the foundry. I've got it back now. Now my challenge is, is we've got to actually mill uh, this, that notch all the way around there. But because this is an oval, it's an ellipse, uh, it's really just not a very practical job to do on my manual milling machine. Uh, could it be done? Yeah, you could do it a little step at a time. Basically, uh, actually my DRO has a function in it that you can give you the coordinates to navigate to. It's a, it's a lot of work. It's really difficult to do manual. This is a job very well suited for CNC though. So the plan is, is we're going to send this up um, to John Saunders. And I've talked to John. John has agreed that he's going to take this on as a little project. Uh, he's going to shoot a video showing how he uh, programs the computer, whatever, and, as well as machines this out on his uh, CNC uh, milling machines. And let me just uh, put a little plug in for John as well because I actually had an opportunity, it's been about a month ago now, I went up and actually was in Ohio, uh, stopped by, uh, actually spent uh, a day or two so with, with John and uh, took his class on um, CNC machining. My main interest in it was I was wanting to learn to do the, the, the 3D modeling in the software just to help me uh, with parts and what have you. I really don't have a CNC machine, uh, but he uses Fusion 360. Uh, Charles Marlin was using SolidWorks. Fusion 360 does pretty much the same thing that SolidWorks does. Uh, does. I'm sure there's differences, and I don't know enough about the two platforms to really uh, tell one from the other, but you know, I, we could have drawn this up in Fusion 360 just the same. Uh, but I, I learned how to do some drawing in Fusion 360, which I've been practicing on and actually got some little projects going on that I'm going to be using that on down the road to be able to show you guys drawings of what I'm working on. Uh, but while I was there, we also got a chance to, to go out in the shop and do some machining uh, of some parts that we drew up on the computer. And uh, these are two parts. I'm, I'm going to zoom you in on these uh, that we did in the class. So in the class, we actually drew these up in the, in the computer uh, and then actually went out into the, the shop and uh, made these uh, on a CNC milling machine, which was really a, was a good experience for me. You know, I, I understand the principles of milling, but really don't know, didn't know that much about the CNC part of it. Uh, and it was a very good exercise. Now, this, first, this was the first part that we drew up. Uh, and this is just, it's a widget, guys. This isn't anything in particular. This was just drawn up because it really has a lot of um, design aspects in it to help you learn how to use the, the, the CAD part of it, the drawing part of it. So there's a lot of just stuff in there that little features on how to properly draw something in the computer. 
Uh, and like I said, this doesn't actually go to anything. It just was a practice piece, but then we went out and actually programmed the mill to make it. Uh, the second one here, this is a little speed handle that goes on a uh, Kurt vise um, so that you can uh, use it as a tightening handle, a little short handle. Uh, it actually has two, so you got one where you have more leverage and one that's just real short for quickly um, turning in and out. So these were two little projects that we made in the class. Of course, got to bring them home with me. Everybody made one, drew it up, and then went and made it on the, on the milling machine. Uh, but anyway, really good class and really appreciate the opportunity to go up to John's place and get to do that. So with that, guys, uh, we're going to pack this thing up. I want to send it up to John Saunders. Uh, let him do his machining on it and uh, probably going to hold off posting this video and try to put it up about the same time that John gets his up just so that they'll both hit out at about the same time and you can follow one to the other. Uh, but I think this will be a cool little collaboration project. John, I appreciate you being willing to do this. Uh, I talked to John. He's like, yeah, I think my viewers would on his YouTube channel would think this would be a really cool little project to do. And uh, it shows some uh, it has some challenges in doing this, and, and he's going to address some of those challenges on how you would go about both drawing this up as well as machining it. So we'll get that to you, and uh, you can now go watch John's video on actually machining this, and then when I get it back, uh, we'll actually go install it in the locomotive and uh, show you that process as well. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later.